So what happens when you get infect, infected by a mosquito when it bites you? The virus is obviously enters the body and um, replicates, but for some unknown reason, uh, despite it doing that, only a small proportion, roughly one fifth or twenty percent, then go on to develop illness, uh, and the illness can vary in its severity to becoming a very mild illness or a, a fever and feeling quite unwell. Fortunately, of all the flaviviruses, this has probably caused the least serious types of symptoms. So most people who have it will have a minor, minor illness. When, what are the symptoms? Well, the symptoms are varied, but one of the commonest ones are joint pain and skin rash. Now, the skin rash is very atypical or unusual in that it tends to be an itchy rash and it tends to be what we call macular papilla, which means it's a blotchy red uh, abnormality on the skin. Um, most of the other viruses tend to cause a rash, which uh, looks like there's some bleeding or some, some red cells in the skin, and that's very different to the Zika rash. Uh, you get some joint pains, you feel unwell. Typically, people say flu-like. You don't have any symptoms of nose running or anything like that, but you just feel under the weather. And that lasts up to five days, normally less, and then you get better completely. So I overall, a benign, mild illness, and only in 20%. With Zika then, it knocked me down for about two weeks or so. What I mean is I wasn't in bed for that time, I was just in bed for about half a day, but the rest of the time, I wasn't myself, I was not thinking sharply, felt tired, weak. Uh, it started one night, I was kind of feverish, the next day that had passed, but I had for a few days kind of shooting pains kind of all over my trunk. It was a bit like shingles, but much, uh, much milder. And then after that, I had a rash on my arms and legs, which wasn't painful or itchy or anything, but that lasted for a few days. And then after that, I had a kind of aching in my hands. And uh, my wife's a medic, and that's when she got a bit worried because she thought uh, maybe it was the onset of um, neurological complications. But that passed after about a day. And then I was just, you know, still a bit weak and, and, and tired for a few days while, while I recovered. Um, I did have dengue before as well. <laughs> uh, and it was a bit like that, but much, uh, much milder. So after a few days, my wife th thought, well, maybe that Zika, and she got me tested at a lab, but, and it came back positive, obviously, but I didn't go to a clinic because, you know, there's no specific treatment. I wasn't feeling that bad, so there didn't really seem much, you know, much upside to, to doing that. So what are the complications of having the virus? I've talked about the minor symptoms, but there are some more serious ones, including that which occurs in during pregnancy, where the virus invades um, the developing fetus and causes particularly brain damage. Um, but it also seems to be able to set off um, the Guillain-Barre syndrome. Now, Guillain-Barre syndrome is a, a condition where you have a, a nerve damage. Uh, it's called a polyneuropathy because it affects many nerves. It affects the sensory and the motor nerves. And it's ascending, which means it spreads from usually from the peripheral parts of the body up to the main parts of the body. And as a, as a consequence of that, you become gradually more paralyzed and losing sensation. And the worst in the small number of people is that it actually paralyzes their respiratory function, which means they can't breathe. And they then need artificial ventilation to keep them alive. It's not a permanent condition and it re returns to normal. The nerves start function again and you after some while you get back sensation and motor function. Um, we don't know why it occurs. It actually occurs in a number of other infectious diseases, so it's not unique to Zika, um, but it occurs, in fact, after having vaccines as well. Um, but it's rare, and how frequent it is with Zika is yet unclear, but it seems to be notable that it is occurring, and it is probably one of the more serious uh, consequences of the infection uh, and on the same sort of um, concerns are expressed about it as, as 
as the effects on pregnancy. What about the other uh, 80%? Well, they're interesting because, of course, they are the people who are carrying the virus, are infectious to other mosquitoes, and can spread it on, and they don't know it. And they're known as a reservoir. And it's not only humans who are reservoirs, of course, it's other animals. So there's a wide range of animals who are known to carry the virus, and probably um, that's why it keeps being sustained, even if no humans have got it, if it's in other small mammals or primates uh, and infecting mosquitoes. And these mosquitoes are very uh, widespread and will bite all these creatures and are able to spread it on.